From time to time, I get questions about these books here, what's on my shelves. In this video, I'm gonna take you through them and highlight some of the ones that have been most impactful for me and encourage you to maybe go read those as well. Hi, I'm Daryl Burling from Master New Testament Greek and I help people like you with the tools, habits and system to master the Greek of the New Testament. If you're interested in learning to read Biblical Greek, then subscribe and hit the notify bell and that way when new videos are released you'll find out about them now i also want to encourage you if you like this video hit the thumbs up button this is going to be a lot of fun and i hope you do enjoy it so like i said people ask me about what's on my shelves they tell me they are zooming in uh, to just see the books that are on my shelf behind me and so in this video i'm going to walk you through these books and i'm going to tell you some of the ones that i think have been really impactful for me that i've really appreciated as i've uh, grown as a christian as i've collected them and i want to encourage you too for some of these books uh, to give me your feedback what do you think have you read these books as i go through them particularly the ones that i highlight uh, what did you think of them did you enjoy them if you not read them would you add them to your reading list and uh, let me know in the comment section below i'll also put a link to all of the books that i'm about to pull out I'll put that in the description below so you can find those books really easily. Now, I do have other books. This is not the entire collection. I have some more over here. I'm not going to show you those this time. Uh, my library is not always as tidy as it would like to be, and that part of my library I'm not super proud of. I also have a lot of books on, on Logos and on Kindle. In fact, I have, I think it's coming up close to seven, 800 books on Kindle, and then I have 10, 12,000 on Logos, something like that. So those aren't worth taking you through. It's funny, isn't it, how electronic libraries are just not as much fun to look at and peruse and browse as a physical library. So that's where we're going to focus today. So let's get into it. First of all, as we start here, we're going to start from the left hand side, my left, and you can see here there's a reasonable shelf full of books here. It goes, it's not quite floor to ceiling, but you know, it's a reasonable size sort of shelf. And up the top, you can see I have my Bibles and books on bibliology, and they go all the way down uh, from uh, languages, really, through the Bible section, down into hermeneutics and some of the questions about the Bible that have taken place, and then I've got a couple of books on hymns. The second shelf down here, uh, this, this is really more pastoral ministry. I have some theology books just here on that side shelf. And then we go into pastoral ministry uh, and then into a little bit of experience and then some classics, uh, church history, and then we're into some of the uh, more intellectual type of books, books about being an intellectual and those kind of things. Let me just pause here for a moment and a couple of these books here are books I have really enjoyed. This is Habits of the Mind by James Sire. Uh, one of the things I really enjoyed about this book uh, was the was the way he introduces the morality of knowledge. Uh, that was something that for me was a bit of a lights on moment, and I really enjoyed that. And to go with that, just here the Christian Scholars Review. This is a journal. Uh, this review, this journal has an article in it, which has been very useful to me over the years as well, and helping me understand how sin affects the mind. So this is uh, this. There's some really good stuff in this section, which I've really enjoyed over the years as well. And the standout book for me would be Habits of the Mind by James Sire. Let's go down one here. And here we have uh, kind of the philosophy and apologetics section. It's, uh, it's, it's not overly long, but one of the most important and impactful books for me here was The Soul of Science, uh, Christian Faith and Natural Philosophy by Nancy Pearce and Charles Thaxton. Now, this book is intriguing to me because when I read it, I was, um, it was my, one of my first entrances into the world of science, and it talks about the history of science and how philosophy has actually impacted science throughout the years. This was helpful for me to see that, you know, the, the world that has said it's all about science is actually not purely atheistic, but in fact has been strongly influenced by the Christian faith throughout history. This was helpful for me to see that the modern scientific uh, thinking is actually out of step with the historical approach to science. So really enjoyed this book and found it really helpful as well. And as we go through here, we go more into worldview, and there's a number of worldview books. Uh, then we have a couple of books here that I've found really helpful talking about um, the gifts, Holy Spirit gifts, uh, those kind of things, and also Christian spirituality. There's a number of spirituality books in here, and I have two copies of this one, not because I think it's wonderful, uh, quite the opposite, uh, really, but because for some reason, 
I don't know, something happened. One got, well, I ordered one, forgot I ordered it, ordered another one, and uh, one then they both arrived, something like that. Uh, a really interesting book here for me has been this one, uh, William James, The Varieties of Religious Experience. Now, James was not a Christian. He was a uh, psychologist, late 1800s. But what I really appreciated about this book is he does a really good job of looking at the different experiences, particularly around mysticism, that different religions have. And I found this really helpful. Uh, and what you find from that is that the mystical experiences that people have and are not different from one religion to another, they're the same, which means that you can't explain them on the basis of a religious viewpoint. You have to explain them on the basis of something broader. And that, for me, argues that some of the things that people who are Christians argue are Christian experiences are actually not they can be explained by other means. And that means that when, when we look at what it means to be a Christian, we can put aside some of those things that uh, you would often regard as um, a Christian experience and just sort of say, well, actually, that's, that's, that's a mystical experience and it can be explained other ways. And so this was helpful for me in just sort of seeing that. It's not the only book on the subject that I found helpful, but it's certainly one of them. Next to that here is a book that I found really helpful. I did a class on charismatic theology in seminary. This book, which is out of print now, unfortunately, you can get it on Google Books, I found to be really helpful for thinking through the modern experiences of uh, spiritual gifts and so on. Uh, and I recommend this to anybody who's interested, but unfortunately it's very difficult to find now. But this was a very good book and really helped me to sort of think through some of the historical elements particularly, uh, and also some of the biblical approaches to how we think about uh, the Holy Spirit and how he's working in the church today. Let me just pause for a moment. Are you enjoying this? Could you hit the thumbs up button for me? That would be really helpful. Thanks. Let's get back to it. From there, we head more into commentaries, and these are ordered canonically, so we start with Genesis, and they're not all strictly speaking commentaries. Some of these are simply related to Genesis, you know, but they're very topical to the book of Genesis, and they're very, you know, they're not, uh, they're not commentaries as such, but they're related directly to the book. Some of these, as we go through, you know, this is... Uh, one of my favorites uh, for other reasons, but uh, carrying on, we get into the New Testament and uh, Romans. I've got this one mostly because it's supposed to be a classic on the book of Romans. I have used it a little bit, but it's more expositional and I really like exegetical commentaries like this one, uh, although this one's not really necessary now either because you can get the same thing in the New International Commentary series. And then of course, the Martin Lloyd-Jones's Set. I have this because when I was doing my doctorate, I was actually, um, I did a study, a directed study under Michael Haken talking about uh, union with Christ and marriage throughout the English Reformed history. And so D. Martin Lloyd-Jones was the 20th century figure in that study. And so I worked through his works on that. Uh, then, of course, on the end here, we have a few books mostly related to Hebrew, a capital of Greek, uh, my copy of BHS there, the reader's edition of that. Next shelf down, we get into some theology on the end there, uh, particularly around the theology of man. As we get in here, this book, Anthony Hokima, uh, created in the image, created in God's image, is a very good book. Um, moving along into some of these, this was also very helpful. The Anthropology of the Old Testament. One of the areas of study throughout my doctorate particularly was anthropology, and uh, this flowed into my dissertation. And so this book is really goes through every single instance of uh, things like the heart and the mind and things like that in the Old Testament. It looks at the Hebrew, how the word's being used, look at the different context, and very helpful just to come to a, a clear understanding of what anthropology actually looks like from an Old Testament point of view. And so I use this a bit. Uh, quite a bit actually in my dissertation and recommend it as well. Uh, next to that I have a couple of uh, other books here on counseling, on the world, on hum humanity and a couple of theology books there. Then we get into our Greek stuff and uh, if you're in the Master New Testament Greek this is probably where the most interesting things are. So it's kind of mixed through here, there's no real rhyme nor reason uh, except that they are Greek. Uh, so we have some uh, Greek grammars here, lexicons and so on, they're all kind of mixed up. Uh, there's another lexical work here, Greek for Life by Dr. Merkel and Plummer. Uh, this is a great book, I really enjoyed this. If you haven't read this book, uh, this, is, this is the sort of book that you really ought to read. 
maybe even once a year, because if you're going through Greek, you do find it quite difficult. This book uh, is a real encouragement to keep reading. So I encourage you to uh, to buy a copy of this and read through it. And you can see I've got a couple of points in there where I've extracted things from it over the years. Right, moving along here, we have Wallace's Greek grammar beyond the basics. Uh, we have Wallace's grammars, we have Zacharias's grammar, what I just reviewed recently. We have the case here for my Tyndale Greek New Testament, which is actually just there with an easy reach. And so I just use it to store my 5th edition UBS. Uh, as a reader's edition, an old 2nd second, second edition of Mounts, uh, Whitaker's uh, reading grammar, and so on. You can just sort of see here, this is a set, uh, the Moulton and Turner set. This is a second hand set I bought in pretty much new condition. It's a really nice set, hardly used. I got that from uh, the Archives bookstore in Pasadena, uh, which was over the road from the Fuller Theological Seminary. I believe it's closed now, but I got that for a really good deal, that whole set. In fact, I think I may have already had a copy of the, in fact I do, if you look up there, I have a copy right here of volume one and so i found this with this set and uh, replaced it so it's more uniform so then i have my septuagint here uh, gary long's books are very good they're worth having uh, then we get into hebrew and you can see i've got a bunch of things on hebrew then we come to our theology section here and this is the 1941 edition of john calvin's institutes uh, so it was before it was broken up by battles into the two volume set. Uh, this is really, uh, I think, what Calvin has argued, what Calvin has kind of suggested or somebody suggested that Calvin thought was as kind of the the uh, the the base set, his pref preferred volume. But anyway, I have a copy of that. Uh, Biblical Doctrine by MacArthur and Mayhew was actually written by the faculty at the Master Seminary while I was there. So the thing I like about this is that the chapters that are in this were written by my professors. Now, it doesn't mean to say I agree with it in all cases, but I tell you what, one of the things I really appreciate about this volume is it has one of the best, like I mentioned before when we talked about anthropology, this has got one of the best treatments of uh, the doctrine of man out of all the systematic theologies that I have uh, come across. So I like that. I use this because uh, Murray takes a slightly different position on covenants, particularly prior to the fall, to a lot of covenant theologians, and I really appreciated that about him, so I bought a copy of this. I don't have the other three volumes. I would love the other three volumes, but I just couldn't afford to purchase them at the time, and it would be nice if Banner of Truth would publish these on Logos, wouldn't it? Uh, then I have a short edition of Grudem. Uh, Thistleton, I picked this up. I need to read it at some stage. Uh, then I have some Tillich. Um, so I went through a phase at one stage where I was uh, looking at heretics, and this came out of my doctoral stage, my doctoral studies, because when I was reading for my doctorate, I came across a lot of the influence of people like Paul Tillich and other liberal theologians in the world of counseling, and particularly Christian counseling. And so I started getting interested in what, what led them down that track. And so I bought his systematic theology. Uh, don't be deceived by the name. It's really not theology at all. It's more philosophy. Um, but nonetheless, I have a number of other books about heretics around my library as well. Uh, this book here is one that I would recommend to you thoroughly. Uh, Randy Alcorn on Heaven. This book is uh, fantastic in the sense that one of the challenges that with the understanding of eschatology is that we often will break it out of a worldly uh, way of understanding the the you know who God made us to be. And again, so it comes back to our anthropology, but not only that, it comes back to eschatology as well. And he really uh, takes a great position. I think, against the idea of Platonism and how Platonism has infiltrated the study of eschatology over the centuries. And so I really appreciated his fresh look at the subject of heaven. So if you haven't read this book, or if you've got people in your congregation who are uh, struggling with, even right now, with the coronavirus going on and things like that, this book is awesome and a really good encouragement to people about what the afterlife will be like. He goes a little bit far at, st at some stages. Uh, I think 
talking about different or speculating I think about certain things possibly due to what we see in some movies but nonetheless this has got some fantastic things in it and it's a real encouragement to read and this really cemented for me my a lot of my eschatological views so or at least it certainly helped ground them. Uh, since we're still we're heading into theology we're still in our kind of eschatology and church section here right at the end and uh, this book here is one that has been on my list of books to read for some time uh, as well. Um, but uh, and then we go down from there and we down from there and we find uh, this is really my section on uh, biblical counseling. And you can see it takes up pretty much the whole shelf. And I've read a good number of these books. Uh, my here's one of my favorite books of all time, which is why I have four copies of it. Came across this book just a little while ago. William Farley, Gospel Powered Humility. Because I'm an arrogant person by nature, I read as many books as I can find on humility, which is to say there aren't that many books on humility, unfortunately. But of all of them, this is by far my favorite. It is theologically driven, which really works for me well. Uh, and it's just very well grounded. So uh, this helps us to see why and helps me to understand why I need to be humble and how a better understanding of the gospel helps me to become humble humble. So if you've never read this book and you want something to help you grow in Christ's likeness, this is a fantastic book. This set here is actually a fairly new set. It was a graduation gift to me from Curtis Solomon, who's the president of the Biblical Counseling Coalition. Uh, very thankful for this set. Um, Practicing Proverbs was a great book. I love the book of Proverbs. And uh, this book is one of the books that I read when I was doing a class on Proverbs in my undergraduate degree. Then we have some books on sex and romance. Uh, this is a good one if you're interested. Uh, but there's a lot of good books as we come through here. Uh, if you're doing biblical counseling, some of these books by Wayne Mack about homework. Uh, this is called the Homework Manual for Biblical Living. This is Volume 1. Volume 1 and Volume 3 are the two best volumes in this set. If you have Volume 2, good for you. I don't use mine at all. Uh, this book. This book was transformational for me. And it's a joy in a lot of ways. So Uprooting Anger is a book that uh, was written by Robert D. Jones, as you can see. I struggled with anger for many years. And this book really helped me come to grips with that and I had a joy in my doctoral studies of actually studying under Robert Jones at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary and getting to know him. In fact he was on my dissertation committee uh, and we had some great discussions. We didn't agree on everything. Uh, we had some good discussions around some issues in Ephesians 5 particularly uh, but I really appreciate Robert Jones and his ministry and this book is fantastic uh, and I really recommend it. All right, moving on from Robert Jones, Faithful Feelings. This was a great book, more academic, deals with, again, I'm interested in anthropology, right? How people work. So feelings, uh, emotions, all those kind of things. This is a fantastic book to, that works through uh, the Bible, really, to understand the different emotional uh, wording and um, uh, concepts that we find in Scripture so that we can understand what it means to be human. Now, this is a more academic version. There is another one called uh, by Matthew Borgman called Feelings and Faith, which is based on this and is a lot more readable. So if you're more academic, this one's fantastic. The Borgman one, if you want something a little bit lighter and easier to read. So moving along here from Faithful Feelings, we come through some more biblical counseling oriented books, some that aren't quite so much. Uh, and then we have uh, the Life in the Father's House. Now this book here is awesome, and I reckon every church member in the world should read that book. I think it's that good. Um, but let me just go in here. We've then got our section here on Union with Christ, which was my dissertation topic. So these are not all of them. Actually, that's not really Union with Christ, is it? Uh, but nonetheless, <laughs> most of these other ones are. Now, you can see here, this is Constantine Campbell's uh, Reading Biblical Greek, which really should be up here with these. But because it's too big, it doesn't fit and it's too long and sticks out it's sitting on top so anyway Constantine Campbell this book here on Union with Christ is great now if you find it burdensome to read through the whole thing I recommend that you actually just skip all the way to the end you can see I've used this extensively uh, the end of this has his summary and I think the summary is worth reading if nothing else um, but the whole book is good it's a, it's a systematic summary of every use of Paul's language related to union with Christ 
uh, in all his writings. So this is this is a must-have if you're doing union with Christ work at all. Finally, from there, as we move on, this is my last kind of section. These books are the ones I reach for all the time at the moment. So what's on this shelf sometimes changes. Some of these don't. Uh, but of these, the one that I wanted to point out here was Jeremy Pierre's The Dynamic Heart and Daily Life. Again, I am into understanding people, what makes us tick, why we work the way we do. This helps me as a counselor and as a theologian as well. Uh, and this also is what helps me with application of the Bible to my own heart too, as well as to others. So The Dynamic Heart and Daily Life, I remember when he was writing this, so Jeremy Pierre was my doctoral supervisor, Dr. Vader, I think the word is, and so um, I remember when, when he was writing this and we had a class covering this material, that whole class was like, you know, fireworks going off in my head the whole time. It was just a whole lot of fun. And uh, it was great. And then this book comes out and he says in it, thank you to my PhD students for enduring. Well, I was one of those PhD students. So uh, it was fantastic to have those discussions. And I'm very thankful for this book. And again, commend it to you as a way to understand what the human heart is and how the human heart works from a biblical perspective. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, tour of my library. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. And if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about the books that I pulled out, you can find links in the description below. Uh, which one of these did you like the most? Did you leave a comment in the comment section below and tell me? I'd love to hear from you there as well. And if you're interested in learning more about Biblical Greek, then download my free roadmap to mastery at masterntgreek.com slash roadmap. And I look forward to maybe serving you and helping you learn the Greek of the New Testament as well. Until the next video, keep taking small steps toward mastery and I'll see you in the comment section below. See you there.